My name is Jeremy Rowe. I am the chairman of Bully Banks. The video update today is on the subject of consequential loss and I want to make a couple of very simple points using uh, members' experiences. The first member we're going to uh, talk to is Derek Pedley. He's a Barclays customer and he's going to talk about his experience of Barclays and consequential loss under the FCA redress scheme. Uh, Derek, thanks very much for uh, coming in. You've um, run a business called Eric Olcott Limited, or run a business called Eric Olcott Limited, and you purchased a 1.2 million swap from Barclays. That's correct, yeah. Can you just take me through what's happened in connection with your swap? Okay, well... The, uh, the company that I own had um, basically three companies. So it had the parent company, which was called DPS Electrics, and then it had two, ch two children in essence, one called Eric Alcott Limited and one called Charles Woods. DPS Electrics actually had the swap. And um, so Barclays on the 16th of January this year admitted liability. Uh, indicated that uh, through the FCA review they felt that I should have had a cap rather than uh, the structured car mortgage they'd sold me. They um, made an interim payment at the end of January, beginning of February. Right, so you're sold the structured collar by Barclays yes, and sir. everyone now agrees, the banks, the FCA, uh, all of the lawyers, that this is a wholly uh, inappropriate pro product for a, a small business. Yeah. Uh, at the start of this year, they accept uh, that they did mislead the product, yeah. and uh, you're in a situation in which uh, monies are paid to the group, but you can't access the funds yeah. uh, for specific re reasons. Now, you, you talk about a group structure. Uh, which was the pr property? Which was the company again that uh, purchased the swap? DPS Electrics. That's DPS Electrics. Yeah. And that's the parent, and that's the one that's got the property assets. That's correct, yeah. Right, what's happened to the uh, other two businesses? Well, on the, um, unfortunately, um, because we were always at the top end of our overdraft, Eric Alcock became insolvent in uh, the middle of January, so um, all the staff were made redundant. So there was um, approximately 25 staff that were made redundant. Uh, January 29th um, from from that stage the originally what we've had to do now is DPS Electrics have just written 515,000 off on their balance sheet this year which was the um, what the company was worth um, prior to accepting the swap. Right, so you have a thriving business, electrical yeah. uh, business, you have a thriving business, and you've lost that business as a result of the uh, the swap and the cash drain on the businesses. Absolutely. And problems with your suppliers. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so you have a major loss as, as an individual, you have a major loss uh, through Eric Colcott Limited. Yeah. Right. What are you going to be paid in respect of that, of the consequences, if you like, of the swap? What What... I'm, what money is being paid for your consequential loss? I am being forced to accept just under £40,000 um, consequential losses and that is going to be on the FCA uh, 8% plus they're going to pay my legal fees because we'd uh, issued legal proceedings. Right, so the early consequential loss you're getting for your business is being destroyed effectively is a £40,000 payment. Yeah. which is actually not consequential loss, it's merely 8% interest. Absolutely. Simple interest on monies that actually were taken from you as a result of this product. Yeah. In very simple terms, what's your view of the uh, consequential loss that's been provided to you? I think the consequential loss is uh, abysmal, is the, is the simple way. I understand legally um, why they might be able to um, argue that in, a, in the court of law. I don't think that morally they uh, should be allowed to argue what they're arguing, that the, the contract was with DPS Electrics, so they will only pay consequential losses for DPS Electrics. The fact that it had a shared bank account between the two, um, they're just not interested in it. But the fact that it represents, in fact, your family, your, yeah. your family's 
uh, economic interest is yeah. ignored and you get minimal consequential loss Absolutely. as a result. Many thanks indeed. Yeah. You've heard from uh, Derek uh, Pedley and I think it is important to bear in mind that Derek's st story uh, also involves um, 45 people losing their jobs. Uh, we're now going to uh, turn to a second member, uh, Sebastian Parsons, different member, it's a different bank, this one is HSBC. Uh, we're talking here about the loss of 60 jobs. Right. Um, Sebastian, many thanks for co um, coming in. Uh, if I understand uh, correctly, uh, you, together with your sisters, uh, Sophie and Tabitha, um, started and built up a successful organic skincare business called Elysia. And that, um, as of 2005, you had uh, purchased a farm and a substantial part of the business park um, near Evesham, and your business was set fair in terms of growth prospects, uh, in terms of uh, profits earned, uh, and no question you would have had uh, issues with the business, every small business does. Uh, but in 2006, uh, your bank, HSBC, uh, sold you a structured collar with uh, a knock-in floor. Um, you employed uh, up to 60 uh, employees through this uh, uh, through this period and really what I'd like you to do now is to talk about the impact of the swap when in 2009 interest rates uh, fell dramatically. Well the, um, yes thank you Jeremy. Um, the impact was really in sort of like two levels. The first level was the cash. So Suddenly we didn't have enough cash. The cash was being used up, 25,000 every quarter was disappearing, that's a substantial amount. Um, so that was something that we were, were dealing with, but the, the second um, consequence, which was, was incredibly difficult actually, was that the bank became hostile towards us. So because we had that swap, unbeknownst to us, we had a half a million pound contingent liability and for whatever reason the bank's risk analysis said to the bank they had to get out of our loan and uh, they didn't ever say anything straight to us or direct, they didn't say um, you have to pay us back the loan, we're, 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 that's what you have to do, you have, but they sort of like intimidated us and they deprived of us, us of cash. You know, no request was ever was ever granted. So the business, stressed by a lack of cash from the bank's products, was then unable to access any of the cash that was locked up in its assets. And it was actually, you know, it had a, well, getting on for two million pounds of, of surplus assets available if the bank had let it use it. Right, so your, your indebtedness was covered by more than yes. two million pounds on the basis of the assets you had within the business. Well, we, I suppose, if you take into account the contingent liability, that would maybe come down to one and a half million. But we didn't know about that at the time. <laughs> but we we had, um, you know, the business park, the farmland, two houses, and there was all of that was covered. Uh, the the bank had guarantees on they had those tied up in the mortgage, so we couldn't go to anyone else and use those assets to raise money. We could only go to the bank. Because we had this toxic swap, no other bank would look at our business. So we went to lots of banks trying to get somebody to take on our business, but they wouldn't. So they, the whole, um, the second level of the problem was really that we couldn't get a good banking relationship as a result of having right. this product. So you have cash flow issues, pure and simple, yeah. because the money is disappearing. Yeah. Uh, to pay the swap, yeah. and then you have uh, cash flows which are due to a breakdown in the relationship with yeah. the bank, yeah. and their very uh, negative response to you, and the uh, repeated pressures upon you. Yeah, I mean, they, they jack the charges up, 
they say, okay, you're a high risk lend now, so we've got the right to increase the interest rate. That costs us two hundred thousand pounds on its own. Yeah. So you know, b because you know they decided to treat us uh, in this negative way, trying to get rid of us rather than trying to support us. Um, we had extra costs. Right. What was the biggest um, negative that came out of the um, overall cash flow position that you were in as a business? What were the consequences to you of running the business with the absence of cash? Well, it, it's just, it, there's a ripple effect. So the bank took 360 odd thousand pounds straight. That was the swap payments. But then there was all of the follow on costs and the total. The total ripple effect of those payments was £1.7 million. Pounds. Right, which the bank took out of your business. Which, the, which our business was deprived of. Right. Over the course, over, since 2009. Right, and, and what are the consequences uh, up, upon your business? So you're in that situation, what's your relationship with your suppliers like? Well, this has destroyed our business. So, um, with that much cash taken out of the business, we couldn't maintain a, a positive relationship with our main supplier and we lost that relationship at the end of 2013 they because we didn't basically we didn't pay their debt we paid the bank instead of them and that wow. irritated them really badly uh, <laughs> irritated the supplier yeah the supplier yeah. you know the supplier's like well we, we can see money going across to the bank but we don't get any money right. we were paying them for the money that we were paying them for the supplies we were having in real time but we should have been, if you like, um, we were two months over our credit limit, so we should have been clawing that back, and we should have, we could have easily done it, easily done it, if we had had access to our funds. Okay. Now, the uh, structured car which you were sold by HSBC, uh, um, through the FCA review, a HSBC have now agreed that that was a missold product. Yeah. Right. And they have agreed to repay, indeed repaid the monies that you paid to them, yeah. plus 8% interest. That's right. Right. Your business has been very substantially uh, damaged, and clearly it was a, a successful business, which you grew from nothing over a short period of time, yeah. uh, with very good uh, growth prospects. You put together a consequential loss claim that went into HSBC. Uh, now, who was the individual who put this claim together? It's a forensic accountant from Dow Schofield and what's called uh, Graham Nunn's. Right, and he's uh, an ex uh, Deloitte's. Yeah, he is. He's, a, he's ex Deloitte's. Yeah. Okay, and Deloitte's are the independent reviewer who are working with HSBC. Yes. Okay, so you've got an individual from the yeah. same professional yeah. uh, background, the same firm. He's a first class forensic accountant with incredible credentials, lots of experience in court. Right. And he puts together a consequential loss claim for you, and the total of which was? The total of seven million. Okay, so you've got a, I, I think it's the point I'm trying to stress, you've got a, a sensible, highly qualified, uh, competent professional to advise you yeah. in making a consequential loss yeah. claim, and he puts a consequential loss claim together which is for £7 million. Pounds. Yeah, I mean, it's in two parts. So the, the £1.7 million pounds of cash that was directly taken out of the business in the past is one part of that. And the other part is the fact that we lost the business. We lost our business. You know, I spent the Christmas holidays of 2013 finding new suppliers. But these are, are brands that are starting from nothing. So we've gone from a £5 million pound turnover business to 100000 And I... I We've got, you know, we've got 10 people working for us, but we're funding that. My parents are funding that. Right. Because our business isn't big enough to pay that. So I'm running this, like, risk that we will build the business quick enough to make it sustainable. Right. At the same time as managing this pressure from this process with HSBC, which has been dogging my life for five right. years. Now, you put together this claim. You think it's uh, an appropriate claim. Your advisor, the accountant, thinks it is. Your solicitors think it's uh, a, a rational claim. Yeah, we, we, we had it looked at by a barrister, somebody who's experienced in this part of the law. And if this was to go to court, yeah, it would. It has merit. It has substantial merit. Nobody in our professional advisor group, including disinterested parties like the barrister, has said anything other than good claim. 
Right. And HSBC have reviewed the claim mm -hmm. and they've now come back to you and advised you what? No, the consequence, they've said the consequence of taking £400,000 of cash out of our business plus all of the other knock on effects was um, nothing. So, in terms of consequential loss, they agree in what element? Well, the, the utility of the money, 8%. And that's it? That's it. They've, they've said, okay, because, you know, some of the overdraft charges, it all adds up to a little bit more than 8%, so we'll pay you an extra 27 grand. But that 8% is based on utility of money, if you had that as a credit balance, not on the basis that you, that's your working capital. That money is the money you're using to make a living. Uh, that's all the assets you've got, and you're, you don't have access to that. You've got to make the best of, of the situation you're in, which we did. But at the end of the day, 1.7 million was too big a burden for our business to stand. All right. Many thanks, Leslie. Two different businesses, two different banks, and the same story. We had one business uh, which had been in existence for 70 years. A uh, second business, relatively new, uh, uh, relatively recent startup business, both viable businesses, both suffering very significant loss uh, following the sale to them of an interest rate hedging product. The reality is that we could produce 2,000 businesses. And the story would be, in essence, the same. A missold product, which is now accepted by the bank that missold the product, that there was a missale. A missold product causing enormous damage to the business. And the business being in a situation in which it is unable to recover the losses that it incurred. The uh, professionals acting for our businesses, uh, the solicitors, the barristers, the forensic accountants, are not um, foolish individuals on frolics of their own. They're competent professionals. They're putting together, to the best of their ability, solid consequential loss claims. Time after time after time, these claims have been rejected out of hands by the banks under the FCA redress scheme. Why are they being rejected? Because the FCA scheme allows the institution that missold the product that is liable for the consequences of that for sale to determine what should the consequences of that for sale be. I have no issue at all that in many, many cases if these claims were decided in the court of law, consequential loss, consequential loss of some scale would be recoverable. There is a fundamental flaw in the FCA redress scheme. It was obvious right from the start. Within a week of receiving information about the scheme, we were putting in writing our concerns to the FCA that there was not an independent appeal process dealing with the issue of loss, of consequential loss in this instance. The scheme which allows the bank who may sell the product to determine what loss is recoverable is unjust. It is a, a failure of British values, it is a failure of British justice. There needs to be a very simple pragmatic step at this stage and that is to put in place an independent appeal process and to allow every individual who the banks have determined that they have missold a product to appeal to if the individual business is unhappy with the redress determined by the banks. It's a very simple step and justice requires that it be taken. Thank you.